Teach a man to mead, and he will mead for a day. Teach a man to mead, and he will mead for a lifetime. <laughs> Thanks to the good folks over at the Doing the Most channel. If you haven't had a chance to check them out, there'll be a link in the description below. I've been subscribed to them for a while. I enjoy their content. Check them out, see what you think. If you'd like me to open up my next video with your suggestion, with your comment, go ahead and leave a comment in the uh, comments below. And the one with the most likes, I'll open up the next video with it. Just leave it as uh, PG-13 if you would. So let's go and get started. Today, we're gonna make a knock-knock mead. A knock-knock mead? What's that? Knock-knock, who's there? Banana, banana who? Knock, knock. Who's there? Banana. Banana who? Knock, knock. Who's there? Banana. Banana who? Knock, knock. Who's there? Orange. Aren't you? Aren't you glad I didn't say banana again? Oh, good Lord. Come on. Let's go make some mead. Hey everybody, welcome back to Hanging with Hodge. I'm Dave Hodgkins. Come for the mead, stay for the terrible bad jokes. So, uh, today's mead, as you may have guessed, we are making a banana, orange, pineapple mead. So, there wasn't room for uh, pineapple in the last joke, but we do the best that we can here. This is all an amateur hour, so you gotta do the best that you can. So today, we are going to be making, as I said, a banana, orange, pineapple mead. We've got a brew bucket here. We've got our honey. This has already been warmed up. We've got uh, from uh, Costco. Uh, I picked up this orange pineapple, 100% juice, uh, organics. So, and then we also have organic banana nectar. So now everything's already been sanitized. So one of the things that you want to do is loosen the tops beforehand and then shake, give them a good shake. Get everything all mixed up well. And then we are going to go ahead and start loading up our bucket here. And as we pour this in, We want to let that chug in to allow as much air as possible into our must because the yeast is going to need that oxygen. I already shook this one up as well. So we're going to go ahead and chug this in. Watch out for the splash zone. Excellent. Now, before we even get going there, we want to take a gravity reading. Because we're not using water, we're using juice that already has sugar in it. So before we start loading honey in, we need to know what our gravity reading is from here. So we're going to take our baster. Fill up our tube. There we go. And probably one more. We have our tube here, and then we will grab our handy dandy hydrometer and drop it in here. Give it a spin as it goes down. comes out to 1 1.055 1.055 so we want to bring this up to one about 1.140 1.140 because we're going to be using the EC, Lavalin EC1118 yeast. This will have a high alcohol tolerance here. By the way, I do already have my 
yeast, it's rehydrating. Some people will just pitch the yeast in. I like to rehydrate it first. So based upon this, we want to get it up to uh, 1.140. So we're going to break out our super calculator here. So we want to get up to 1.140, so 1.140. We're going to subtract off our uh, original gravity reading that we have right there, which is 1.055. That comes out to 0 0.085. So to get that up to uh, the 1.140, we're going to add enough honey in there. Uh, and since it runs about, each pound of honey in water runs about 0 0.035 in gravity reading. So we're going to want about two and a half, three pounds of the honey in here to make up our additional sugars that we're going to be using. And then we'll take an additional reading. So we're going to go ahead and start. It's nice and warm. And start loading this up. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it here. Let's bring this over here a little bit. Right handed, it makes it easier. And this being a five pound container. Go with that. However, I've got a little bit more than a gallon in here. Now we'll take our wand. Move this out of the way. And stir this up. Now, let's take another reading, see where we're at. Again, handy dandy hydrometer. Give me a spin. We're at one point one three oh. No, just a little bit more. A little bit more sugar. A little bit more honey in there. Give that a stir again. I know a lot of recipes they call for X amount of honey by the pound. I like to actually go not only by the pound, that gives me a rough idea, but then by the actual gravity. All right, and then through the magic of editing, we have. Stirred it all up, got it well mixed. We'll take one more gravity reading. My hydrometer, the handy dandy hydrometer. Gets us at 
sure on that. Yep. Actually, about 1.145 is where that is. So we're going to go ahead and add that back in. Now, again, what's real important is that we write this all down. So now we're going to go ahead and add pitch hour yeast. Give that a quick mix. And because we've got a high sugar content, we've got some nutrients that will be coming from the banana nectar and from the uh, orange pineapple juice. We will be adding some dimonium phosphate uh, but we're going to wait until tomorrow to do that. We're going to let this get going first, and then we're going to go ahead and add our dimonium phosphate tomorrow when we get that started up. So this point here, we're going to go ahead and get our lid on. Again, looking to see where our handle is going to be so that it doesn't interfere with our uh, uh, air stopper here. So we'll go ahead and we'll refill our star sand in here. Get that in here. And we're gonna add some more star sand into the top of that. And then pulling a Julia Childs, I had actually already had a batch made up previously that is actually now ready to be bottled. Uh, so we are going to take one final gravity reading so this started off at 1.140. I'm expecting it to be about 1.014, 1 1.012. That's where I stopped it earlier this week. Right then, get our handy dandy hydrometer. And we are right at 1.012. exactly what I wanted. So now let's go ahead and give this a taste. And actually, I already know that it tastes good because when I finished it off, it looked really good. So this is really clear. It's got a nice clarity to it. By the way, so this is our Cherry Republic glass. Uh, last year, before the whole world went to, you know. <laughs> uh, my wife and I, we went to uh, Frankenmuth uh, up in uh, the other side of Michigan. And one of the wineries that we visited, one of the wine stops we visited was Cherry Republic. They have some really good wines there. Um, we, we had a great time doing some wine tastings there. And they've got a lot of good wineries in the area, and this is just one of the places that we went to. So if you ever get a chance to stop over at Cherry Republic, uh, go in there, do some wine tasting, see what you think. We enjoyed it. We brought some bottles back with us, and they're really nice people as well. So, cheers. That's really good. That is really good. So you 
taste the orange and pineapple right off the bat. And then uh, as it's going down the back of the throat, that's where I taste the banana uh, at that point there. So this came out really nice. So now, let's go ahead and bottle this. Let's start by pouring this back in here. And again, everything's sanitized. I'm really just pouring it back in here so that it makes it easier to load the bottles. Let's get started. And now it's time to bottle these up. So we've got our bottler here. We just stick it in there. Take our cork, as I said, I like to use the synthetic corks. Drop it in there, and as we pull the handle down, inside here it's gonna squeeze that cork together. This will shove it down into the bottle and then release it. One. As you can see, this goes a whole lot faster than one of those hand ones. Technically, this is a floor corker, but I'll put it on the table because I'm a rebel. All right. Four. There we have it. Five bottles of Knock Knock Mead. Tell the kids that joke. And the only thing that I do, I don't put labels on my bottles, but I do mark the corks with a permanent marker. Uh, that way there I can easily reuse it. I don't have to keep scraping uh, labels off. This is for my personal use, so it's not like it's for competition or anything like that. This is because I enjoy drinking it. So remember, make mead your way. Have a great time. Give it a try. Don't forget to click that like and the subscribe button. I will have a couple uh, videos over here for previous videos that I've had. And there'll be a button over here uh, if you'd like to click it to subscribe to the channel. Uh, but don't forget to click that like button, the subscribe button, and the bell notification. And we'll see you next time.